G'day mates, welcome back to the Wargaming.net League Global Grand Finals here in Warsaw, Poland. What a day it has been so far. Already seeing the climax of Group A and now getting into the thick of things in Group B we are. Let's bring up those brackets and show you guys at home exactly where we are right. Oh, so we saw earlier on of course that Noah did take down an Energy Pacemaker. It was pretty much off stream. We did manage to cut across to see of course our Red Rush Unity go up against UAD. UAD. And it was a, a bit of an anti-climax, perhaps. Red Rush Unity looked like they definitely had the long and short of that engagement. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking like we're heading towards the game of the round here, possibly. It's going to be Noah up against Red Rush Unity. But I'll leave that to the experts to take you into. So, guys, take it away. Clutch and boys, let's hear it. Thank you, Uber. Gentlemen, I want to talk about how important Korea has been overall in the world of esports. And I recently got to visit the country in Seoul and got to watch some World of Tanks action. And it was quite intriguing to see, one, how big the crowd was. It was huge. And two, the types of play these teams are bringing. I would have to say, in all fairness, that they may be behind when it comes to the meta. Russia being ahead, of course, but not too far behind. And as we've seen in multiple games over the last uh, decade and a half since we've seen esports in the world of, uh, of broadcast, that they catch up very, very quickly. And the culture of Korea is very accommodating to the world of esports. Many individuals are pro gamers as a living. And because of that, they have this cultural resonance that some countries are a little bit behind. Europe is way ahead when it comes to America. A lot of, uh, a lot of young individuals, when they tell their parents, hey, I'm going to be a pro gamer, they will, one, ask what the heck is that, and two, shake their heads and say, no, you're going to college. But a lot of these players have been able to make headway for a lot of the second or third generation of esports pro gamers that are coming down the line. So we have a lot to thank for Korea, its culture, its amazing broadcasts, and also what they're able to bring to the table when it comes to strategy, expertise, tactics, devotion, all sorts of things that makes the best of the best when it comes to athletes. Now, in the present moment, that's all the optimism talking, NOA from South Korea, second seeded team, do they even stand a chance against Red Rush Unity? Well, personally, I think they will do a bit better than UAD. They have a higher quality of the league, a larger number, number of players on the servers, and uh, Koreans actually take role models in Russian and European teams, and they study them. So we might see some tactics they saw from other teams, but on their own way. And uh, they have some quality players. I hope they will excel. They have that Shio Papa, Shio he's Papa, a very yeah. solo player. Uh, they have uh, Artiworld, he's like a carry for them. Mm -hmm. We can call him like that, the damage dealer. And if they get in position to do some damage, a lot can happen. A lot can happen. And I, I'm just going through the expectations of a lot of people here when they see these names match together. But it's all about how they perform. But let's take a look at NOA a little bit more in depth with their stats and opinions and some of the people that are very familiar with World of Tanks and esports. I mean, when it comes down to the accuracy, the creativity, and all these other pretty much hard stats that we see, creativity is a bit lacking. But again, they're going to adjust it to what the current meta is. And the meta does keep changing based on the region. Decision making, it's all right, but the accuracy and the aggressiveness, which makes any team stand out initially when it comes to 7x42, is what is their strong suit. And yes, they've gone up against Arete multiple times, and because of that, they've continued to get better as a team. But this is a huge opportunity for them to measure their skill and to know how to become better in the world of esports and world of tanks. And that's pretty much all we can say about NOA, but they had some words about themselves to introduce who they are as a team. Let's take a look. We do well prepared and uh, we came to here for win and our target is Grand Finals. We did our best uh, to practice every day, so there will be good results. Uh, we have 
uh, courage on this tournament, and I think this is the time to show uh, NOAA team show the strength to the world. Thank you very much, NOA, and thank you for that interview in English. Very well done, my limited Korean. Hello. Thank you. Nice to meet you. That's about it. Uh, I actually know more Korean than Polish. I got to work on that. But this is a team, again, that we've talked about, gentlemen, that wants to be the best. And that is going to drive any of these teams, especially with how much pressure they put on themselves. But I look forward to what they're going to bring against Red Rush Unity. Let's talk about this team. We saw them dominating up against UAD, you are dead previously. Let's take a look at their stats overall. Aggressiveness, fight coordination, which is crucial. Creativity, you don't need to be creative when you're effective, right? If you can work together as a team and do well as a team with your fight coordination, you can play the same strategy over and over again as long as it's solid. Yeah, and because they're the Red Rush team, they like to play really aggressive, so it might not show that creative from time to time, but it works. It works. It works. <laughs> if it works, don't change it. Right, Mr. Mojo? I wouldn't agree. I think they're actually <laughs> trying to change a lot when they play. Uh, they try to change tactics according to different teams. The problem is that decisive decision making they have because sometimes they just block out or argue between themselves and do some erratic stuff. It's. Uh, I think it's because they are all really good players, like MVPs. They're all MVPs in their teams, so sometimes the MVPs might not do that much good in together, so they might class inside of the team. So, Well, we got to see them play previously, ladies and gentlemen, but let's go ahead and take a look at what the Red Rush Unity had to say about themselves. We are here as uh, a part of Grand uh, Finals, World of Tanks, and we are happy to take part in this uh, tournament. It was hard way, uh, a, long, a long year, a lot of training, a lot of uh, fighting, and we are happy to be here. We are not fighters. We are just here to have fun and to play a uh, great game. We always have special tactics and tricks. If you're rooting for Red Rush Unity, hashtag special tactics. Those that are familiar with esports know that phrase for another esports professional in a different game. <laughs> shout out to White Raw. Also, huge shout out to Tasteless and Artosis, who've been locking down the English commentary out there in Korea for the different leagues. And here we go, guys. It is the map veto choice between Red Rush Unity and NOA. Coin flip will determine who's going to be home and away, or the choice to be home or away. Coin is flipped, and it looks like the Red Rush Unity gets to choose which type of team they were. Gentlemen, if you won the coin toss, what would you choose, home or away? Away. You choose away? Yeah. Mr. Mojo? Hmm. Tough one. Depends who I play with. Depends who you play against or who you play with? Who I play against. Okay. I like to pick the side for the map, yeah. not, not the map. Yeah, we talked about that previously. Yeah. Many, many individuals in the world of tanks, world and esports would rather choose the sides rather than the map. Even Fall, Sihu Papa, LB, Candy, Red Bull, High Narrow, Artie World will be the roster for NOA. I must ask how many Russians are needed to pick one map? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently three. Still going through the map. Veto steps the first veto. I don't think we're going to see steps at all today, fellas. That Not might be true. I don't know. Tell you what. If we see one of the teams play steps today, I'll buy you guys ice cream. Sound good, <laughs> Mally? She's excited. Yeah. 
All right. Ellie's cheering. Uh, tell me a little bit about Renal. We saw him do quite a bit of damage in that last series. Over 3k in one of the battles, I believe. Yeah, Renault from uh, the Unity. Yeah. In the game, uh, uh, last game against UA UAD, uh, he did in the end over 3k damage. That's pretty much carrying your team almost alone. That's huge damage for one tank. And he was playing IS-3, so he was shooting constantly in the train tracks. Ruinberg, Prohorovka, the other Vitos, one more to go. And then we'll determine uh, which map. Oh, Ants is gone. Cliff Mines and Himmelsdorf. All right, I want to talk about Mines again, guys. East side, Red Rush Unity was completely ready for that. If NOA was watching, if they have an east side strat, I believe they'd be hesitant to try to play it up against Red Rush Unity. I don't think we're going to see east, east play in the Mines. As the Korean teams have been studying on the EU and Russian teams, uh, they might be play standard, standard or... Of course, they might have something on their <laughs> sleeves. We never know. Well, it's taken three of them to discuss which maps they want to play when. So this is, they're taking this very, very seriously. We are talking about decision making in uh, stress situations. <laughs> <laughs> very stressed situations. Well, both these teams do have the advantage of a win under their belt today. They've, been, uh, they've had more time technically to rest up compared to the other teams that we saw in Group A. It will be at, in Himmel. It will be actually interesting to see. Will we see the Korean banana ambush in the eight line? <laughs> the banana ambush. <laughs> yeah. The parking lot strategy. It's possible. I, I don't think they will play. It, no, I don't think so yeah. either. That was that was pro pro Magnum Man type yeah. uh, esports that we saw from there. All right, Cliff. Third map, Mines. Map number two, Himmelsdorf. The first one. On the winner's side, we're going to find out which areas that they have chosen, which sides they will spawn once a game gets underway. As a reminder, these are blind picks. They do, know, they do not know which tanks the opposite team will be choosing until they get into the game. We won't know either because we have to keep it a secret to make sure that we don't say it on, <laughs> on camera on microphone. Uh, but there's a handshake, too, between both teams. Best of luck, gentlemen. Um, anyways, going into the first map, the first decisions, I look forward to any particular surprises that some of these teams might actually bring. I don't think uh, Unity will try to bring something out of the box at the moment. Uh, they will probably hide tactics they've been practicing for high, higher rounds of competition for later. So they will just probe the maps, take some offensive positions and see where UA no way. Noah, where Noah is and uh, how can they maybe win the match easiest for mm -hmm. themselves. Noah, on the other hand, has nothing to lose. They're playing against a versatile adversary. They're known, they're strong. They should try whatever they want, and they should really give it a try. It's a very good input, an input to have there, an attitude to have as well. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Exactly. And with that, do you feel you can be more creative, or you want to play more standard? No, they should be definitely more creative and try some things they never played because if they just go for their standard, it will not be enough. They're not experienced enough to just play some standard tactic that will uh, just not be imaginative. These guys will see it through. Yeah, if they will play an unorthodox game, I really hope they have trained it well. And they might then ca catch them off guard. I think that is their only chance. Yeah. We're going to have to find out. Waiting for a final confirmation to make sure all the players are ready. We do appreciate your patience. Again, we want to make sure that all of their peripherals sound. Everything is good to go so they can play to their utmost ability. Uh, Red Rush Unity looking at the team roster. Renault, Diodor, Lusiquel, Cappy, Nuclear, the Anatolic. And you guys are going to have to help me with the last one. Artist. Artistichny. 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 Anatolic. This Anatolic. is a name that's pretty... Anatolich, sorry. This is a name that's uh, familiar with a lot of tankers that get into World of Tanks. At least they, they look to him. And they also look a lot to Lusiquel because, you know, top five in the region. Yeah. And, of course, Lusiquel is one of the best players in the team, uh, Red Rush Unity, and in the random battles, one of the best in the world. So um, he's one of the carries for his team, of course. Everyone wants to watch him and learn from him. And that's why he's one of the most popular streamers out there. Yeah, and it's very, very important to learn the tactics to emulate the pros, but also some of these teams have to be careful what they stream. Uh, at least I don't think teams like to stream coordinated efforts in some of the tournaments. And I remember when we were first streaming tournaments in North America and some teams were like, oh, we don't want to reveal our strategies. And that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if, if we 
could not watch team strategies in traditional sports, we'd have no traditional sports. We wouldn't, yep. have, we wouldn't have any broadcasting. That is what allows teams to, one, show off their strategy, two, be victorious, and three, to have a certain flow, a certain evolution, a certain vitality to the meta. And I feel that a lot of these teams linking up for the first time, competing for the first time, is going to add even more vitality overall worldwide to what they're bringing on an individual sense and what they can bring back to their different regions. I would say streaming doesn't hurt the game at all. At, no, it doesn't. At, at, at the beginning when we started playing and they said, oh, the matches will be streamed, we were like, oh my god, everyone will see what we play. But we will see who other guys play. Yep. So we can learn from each other. And uh, being a game creator, if you have your specific tactics, you're always one step ahead because you actually know how do you want to react on different stuff on the map that can happen. So you're always one step ahead and the guys that are trying to just copy you they really have to think hard. What is the core and soul of their tactics? Yeah, I think it only evolves the game. Energy Pacemaker, the team that fell to NOA earlier from China. We're going to try to keep you guys updated on that game that's happening in the foyer. And the winner of that will go on to face the loser of this match. The winner of this match continues on, has to wait for that. Next match to be complete. Again, still waiting for final confirmation here, ladies and gentlemen. Almost ready to start this first battle and man well, this is match number six for us i believe match number seven already we've had a fantastic crowd in poland so far i mean the, that le lemming train hype train was fantastic to start off the day but i feel a lot of these audience members both here live and around the world will get to be exposed to new strategies and new new teams here obviously from around the world and i look forward to more of the interaction that's happening on twitter hashtag the grand finals well, I would say of all those teams, uh, we really saw some interesting plays. Uh, the audience came to see Lemming Train, but also the other teams that gathered here to play from all around the world. What's specific for this is uh, you cannot see these teams again on the same spot. They came here to meet now and God knows when will they meet again. This is like a unique opportunity for us all. It is. It is a very unique opportunity. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the match is finally ready to get underway. Let's throw it on over to our commentators. Thank you so much, Clutch. And once again, it is me and Oliver. We have been kind of waiting in the winds, watching how these games have been pro progressing. And already, you know, we haven't seen too much of Noah just yet, but we did get to see a lot of Red Rush Unity, and uh, it looked pretty damn good so far. I think a lot of people questioned how they'd perform as a collective. You know, they're strong individuals, but people questioned, you know, will they gel as a team here? Will they show what they're made of? So far, I don't think we've seen them tested, but they certainly look good here. Exactly. I mean, you need water to break down gel, you need some press, you need some lubricant. And at the moment, UI did, did not provide that, so we haven't really seen uh, Red Rush Unity tested. Maybe Noah can do that. They've been doing pretty well in second Certainly. a few seasons. Only to Arete and the other Korean team, the seeded one, which we'll be seeing tomorrow. So this is going to be a very interesting game. I think Unity definitely going to be tested. How much? We're just going to have to wait and see. Very much so. And I think it was summed up quite nicely uh, by the analysis desk earlier. Red, you know, Red Unity, Red Rush Unity have everything to lose here. We've seen a lot of upsets today, whereas Noah coming in, you know, Noah will practice, will look at the demos of the opponents. Will Red Rush Unity, yes or no? We will find out now because we are ready to get underway in the first map. It will be Winter Himmelsdorf. Take us through these lineups. So we got a 110, triple 50, 100, IS3, double T1 for the side of Unity. Triple 50, 100, double IS3, double T1 for the side of Noah. Only the interesting pick, I guess, is uh, you know, you see Rhino playing the uh, the 110, that Chinese tier 8 heavy tank. We've seen that uh, from the likes of Denova now, GG well played. So it's an interesting pick. It provides more armor from the front. It's also easier to play. You know, you can yes. get the snapshots off. And it doesn't do quite as much damage, and you know it's not quite as survivable for any, anywhere else apart from the front. So it has got a little bit of a downside as well as the good sides. First spot's coming out, and Lucy Girl in the standard position. I think you know still Mojo caught it pretty well. For Unity, at least they're going to play the standard kind of tactics. They're going to go a little bit offensive, see what they can find from Noah, then uh, then make the reactionary plays. They're not going to be bring out anything special, and you can see that here. As they are over towards the left side, sending 150-100 up the hill, and a couple of T1s in just good positions mm -hmm. to spot and move forwards. Yeah, and, and I want to say, you know, the Red Rush Unity, on paper, certain favourites here, but they're clearly respecting their opponents. They're not just running in haphandedly. They know that will not work against a competent team, and they're clearly, you know, testing the waters here, finding their opponents. You're finding out what works, what doesn't, because, you know, you may argue the Red Rush Unity didn't have the best warm-up in their first game. It wasn't exactly a big challenge for them. They handled it perfectly. 
to now. We've got to see how they handle maybe a tougher opponent who can really give them a game. And at the moment, you know, where do you think that fight's going to begin? Because we are seeing movement from Noah. They are not just sitting in, they're not turtling down. They're happy to rotate and test this map to its limits. Where are they planning to go to? Well, they look like they're going to be rotating around onto the MX 5100. Play, played by the Analyc, one of the uh, shot callers for mm -hmm. the Unity. Um, I guess that's also something to do with their, their, their preparation. They obviously do a lot of preparation. They look at the Russian teams, they look at the European teams, they look at the North American teams, they say, okay, what do they do well? What do they do badly? Yeah. And how can we really exploit their weaknesses and yes. even exploit their strengths and turn them into a weakness? And that's, that's kind of what they're doing. They see the 5100 on its own. They want to focus it down. They want to get it out of the map. They guess they know that the rest of Unity is over towards that left side. They can't react in time. Um, so it could be a good move, but they've got to do it quick enough because eventually, you know, Analyc being such a... Uh, uh, being such an experienced player, this guy was is around for, for absolutely ever. Um, he, he, he will know to get off the hill pretty quickly. He will know that if he stays there too long, eventually something's going to come around onto him and he's going to be in some serious trouble. So expect him to come off the hill. Cap's going to take his place once he's up there and yep. uh, he's just going to be the spotting uh, for that place. Well, he's going to have to kind of get that foresight to move pretty soon because as you can see on your screens, Noah are progressing in the way towards the top there. Candy making a push down the eight line. Nuclear is laying in wait, so this could go badly. Obviously, let's see how this one goes. Not too far now around the corner. The spots will happen. Screech of halt on the brakes there, but still, this is quite aggressive coming out from Noah. It's extremely aggressive. They've been known to be an aggressive team. Nice shot coming out from Lucique to connect inside of Candy. And he's going to come around to Nuclear. Probably going to get the first frag here, but not a big frag. No. Especially not when they're pushing so heavily. And now Unity are going to do reaction. And honestly, it looks like Noah kind of sandbox themselves into one area. They're going to get surrounded. They're going to get taken down. That's exactly what I would ask you there, because they're either going to have to fold completely towards Antelish, as you said, or hope they can just somehow keep away this barrage of other tanks that are making the way around. Noah are now out of position, they're aggressive, and they're facing down the Red Rush Unity who can handle these situations. This is where individual brilliance shines. Now, how the hell can Noah get out of this situation now? Well, first of all, they need to get, make sure that uh, IS-3 is actually going to come up because it's all the way out of position. Yep. You know, he needs to go in the middle at the very least, and one, you'll only be able to get one shot off before he has to retreat again. Mm. A couple of more shells coming out, but it's going <laughs> to rotate up that date line and really get himself into a good position to support his team. But he could just hold the rotators, I feel. He doesn't need to necessarily get into their faces. It's, you know, he knows that these guys are going to split, which they're doing. There's two tanks already splitting around there. He can pincer them in. Red Bull is yet to be essentially known. So if these guys push around half-handedly, expecting to take down Shia Baba with no trouble, he could land these shots, and they're going right into the trap now. Red Bull needs to make this count, however. He's got to make these shots really hurt, and at the moment, right now, Arti are just focusing down Shia Baba. He's gone low. He's almost down and out. He's 58 HP left. He's surely going to be taken down. Candy now coming around in the battle. This is low as well, but this is not going down just yet. Only two players lost from Red Rush Unity, two from Noah. This is a close battle, and Red Bull is doing the damage. Arti is low. He could go down. The the reload, however, may hold him back, but Candy comes onto the scene, gets the kill. That is brilliant play. Noah may be causing a bit of an upset here, ladies and gents. Noah are not down. They are not out, and Rhino is now surrounded. Candy and Red Bull just pincering him down, but here comes Antelish, here to save the day, possibly. We can only find out Rhino does have reload. He takes down the opponent, and it's back almost all even. Antelich is trying to get on the reload so he can rotate back around, but the thing is, Rhino and Diador have got to do as much damage as possible, so when he's off the reload, he can do it all. Diador coming in. Let's see what he can do. And you do have one player, extraordinary. He's been picked up. This is unbelievable. Noah could win the first map here. The Red Rush UD are being picked to pieces as one man now stands. He goes to the ramp to save the ammunition. He doesn't even have reload yet, but three players stand. He can do this. Do not get me wrong, but this is going to take a miracle. It's going to take a more than a miracle, I think. And it's going to take some absolutely amazing players. We've seen this before on Himmelsdorf, though. One tank taking out three, you know, one versus three. It's it's not impossible, but it's pretty hard. If you look at the kind of HP uh, uh, the uh, Noah guys are sitting on, you've got RT World sitting on 218, White Morpho sitting on 11 HP, and Candy, the only one with a little bit... Uh, a little bit of, of room to play with. Exactly. One shot to play with, 521. Everyone else is a two-shot on Candy. Uh, is a one shot and Candy is a two shot. So they've got to stick together, which is exactly what they're doing. They've got to get the right angle on. Obviously, the Analyc playing the 5100, which is the perfect clutch tank 
for this situation. He's got to be in the right position. And he's going to get there. He's going to get behind where the, the kind of uh, hold down position is. Okay, it's a 5100, so he doesn't have that much armor, but it'll still be a great position. Well, Candy now peers around the corner. They've got a good idea. Not 100%, they're going to get the cap underway. This is going to give him a chance here. And Delish lays in wait, Perfect. waiting for the moment to pound here. The clock is ticking, but he knows he's got time. First shot's coming through. He did not land that one. No one has gone Whoa. down yet. This is unbelievable. He could lose this. 1v3. Can he stop this in his tracks? Can he? Goes for the pier. He's toying with him. He knows where they are. They've teased him out. They've baited him in. There's no way he can run and hide for this. He's down! Noah have caused a huge upset. Korea's second team here have taken down a Neuron favorite coming to this tournament. And Adley must be kicking himself a little bit there because he could have done that. He was in the right position at the right time, but three bounces just simply isn't good enough. <laughs> he should have been hitting them. He should have been making them count, but now he's going to be kicking himself there. And I think once again, you know, uh, Unity underestimated Noah completely. They yes. pushed around without that intelligence. They didn't know where that fifth... Red Bull! They ignored Red Bull as well. They did not know where that fifth tank was at all. They thought, okay, we're the, we're the best players in the world. We're going to push in. We're going to surround them. Fair enough. Yep, there's it, no it, problem with it, that. If you don't have any... Exactly. Four tanks against five, you're going to win that engagement. But you're not going to win it if you're pushing around when there's another tank behind you on the rotate, on the flank, and Red Bull was in the right place at the right time to do that damage. And he did it perfectly. He pushed in, pushing, uh, I believe, Cap out of the way so he couldn't actually engage. Yes. So Unity now one point to, to the worst. Noah's taking mm -hmm. up a point here. So all Noah needs to do is draw the next map and to, to throw Unity back down into that uh, loser's bracket. So they're going to have to get themselves <laughs> back into this game. And Noah... Very impressive stuff. Stunning stuff. And I've got to say, you know, credit to the Korean scene. Obviously, the two best teams out there, they're known as rivals. You know, mm -hmm. Arate and Noah, they go head to head. They're, they're known to kind of a little bit of banter, but, you know, at the end, then there was cheers, there was claps, there was a lot of smiles across their faces. It's always good to see upsets in this. You know, even Victor at the start said he wants to see an underdog do well. And I think we might be seeing that right now. I don't think anyone would have expected Noah to even pick up a map, especially not Himmelsdorf, one of those kind of standardized maps. It's not where you get some crazy tank choices. You might get a 110 in there, but it's not like you're going to see Arty suddenly becoming available. You know what I mean? It's, it's something that we know how to play. These guys know how to play. But as you said, that kind of lack of concentration, that slight hap-handed approach, they kind of threw it away themselves then. Yeah, and what was that T 110 for? You know, I, I really don't. They didn't even put it to the that's, place that we've seen all, it useful. That's exactly it. That was that was hap-handed approach with your tank picking. Um, the 110, yes. it's been used effectively on on let's say Ensk. Um, okay, we've seen a couple of times, especially from the south, from GG Well Played on 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 Himmelsdorf, but. I haven't really been that impressed, and, and there it really didn't do very much. It survived quite a long time against Red Bull, but um, it just couldn't get the damage down. It was bouncing shots. It, you know, he unbelievably, you know, for such a good play, he was actually mm. just hitting the tracks of the IS3. He was getting completely outplayed. That would have made a big difference if he actually managed to hit the shots. And I think the 5100, an extra 5100, would have, would have really benefited that team in Certainly. terms of the burst potential they, do, they can do um, to really thwart off a very aggressive Noah and, and you know we're talking about this aggression before they are an aggressive team yes um, some somewhat more than Arate their, their Korean counterparts uh, which so far is catching unity off guard obviously we've got minds to think about next um, an aggressive map overall so do you think that aggressiveness is really going to you know play to their favor once again it's hard to say we I, I always when you come to these questions look back to the European leagues and the results we've seen so for example Virtus Pro and Dignitas at the time Two top teams, two best teams. Near and Untouchable barely losing maps. The only teams that pick up games against them are the crazy aggressive strategies, the Spales, the Kazna crews, who used to be able to just do something out of the box and catch them out. And we're seeing it again here. These top teams, these very serious, very tactical, very, you know, hunkered down to the millisecond teams. When someone rushes at you and depends on, you know, those quick reactions, those team fights, those cohesive moments, they can crumble. And it's exactly what happened on Hillsports. We can only find out if it's going to happen on Mines. We are near on ready to get underway here. And I'm not sure what we're going to see. You know, aggression is great, but it has to be within a certain amount of control. Otherwise, we're going to see another push around the wrong side of that hill. And it's going to go very downhill very quickly. So, Noah, Red Rush Unity. Red Rush now have their backs to the walls. They can't draw this. They can't lose this. They can only go for the victory here. They've got to pick it up. Otherwise, Noah will be walking into the better position, but we are ready to get underway in our second map. It's going to be Mines. What are these tank choices we're seeing? So from the north, we've got uh, the Unity side. 
You've got a, a pretty standard lineup of the triple 30, 90, T690, 32, double T1. And for no, I guess, pretty standard apart from you, two T32s is pushing your luck a little bit. Uh, so the double T32, mm -hmm. triple AMX3090, double T1. But I kind of like that combination of the, the fragility of the yes. AMX3090 plus the real uh, uh, just pure bu bu brute strength from the T32s. You can see uh, Unity have used that northern spawn to their advantage, pushing straight up there, getting themselves on that higher ground immediately. RT World on the flank from Noah, trying to get some side shots, something uh, we've seen Lemming Train do a lot as well. So definitely something that's worth looking at. Candy being spotted there in his T32. But so far, I think you know, Unity having the higher ground, they have the advantage. Um, they just have to play it out correctly. Obviously, as you said, they can't lose the Analyc now. Uh, losing a little bit of HP there, down to about, I don't know, 80% or so. Yeah. Uh, may maybe even shooting a couple of shells there in his AMX 3090, in his T69 even. So I think um, a little bit of cautionary play needed from Unity. They don't have to be too cautious because it is mines. It does, it does favor that push off the a hill. A little bit of boldness. Exactly. Yep. The, the push off the hill, use those T69s with the gun depression to do as much damage as possible. AMX 3090's flank from behind. Maybe even send that T32 first to really absorb the damage. Yeah, so the tier one has been picked up, uh, well, Noah's has gone down, should I say, uh, even for has been removed there, but Antlish is really receiving damage at the moment, and all the bigger tanks, you know, the hard hitters, the ones you want to keep fairly alive for Noah, have yet to be scathed. They're, they're playing safe, they're playing smart. RT you know, did get you know, tracked then for a second, but he's back up and running, no problems, no, nothing to worry about, but the big key players for Red Rush Unity they're feeling that frustration, I feel. You know, once you're, you know, you get that arrogance behind you of being, I'm a talented player, and they are. Let's not take that away from them. They are phenomenally talented. But you start getting this, you know, entitlement to being that good. You feel you're always going to hit those shots, so you go for that peak. But then you underestimate your opponent can hit it just as well, and that's what they're kind of feeling the pinch of. And it's going to be a matter of time they've got that horrible rude awakening, and I'm hoping it's not too late, because this is their last chance, essentially. Yeah, and if Antelish could hit a shot, that would be brilliant as well, because <laughs> he has not hit a single shell, I swear to God. Um, but he's got to really get himself back into this game yes. because, you know, um, as one of the shot callers for your team, you can't be underperforming. You have to be exactly. there and, and really leading your team. Obviously, Cap and Nuclear playing those two T1s, I'll have the real oversight. Um, it's quite funny, actually, you know, Cap and Nuclear. They're such brilliant players. I mean, Cap was one of the main players in Unity anyway, and Red Rush Team 3 when that was around. Nuclear, obviously, coming from Red Gra. Um, also a fantastic player. Seeing, seeing that talent in Tier 1s um, is quite funny, but that's that's pretty much the norm for this level of play. Um, you, you really just have brilliant players for all seven and however many you know subsets you have. And that could be for one to three in this case. So I, I want to look at what Red Rush Udy are doing here. Adelish is going so low. He's down a 5-5-3. Five, five, he had to get full engagement here. You know, Adelish is surrounded. He's got candy there. The Red Bull is there. You know, Shia Papa is not far away either. So he's pretty much surrounded. He can't do much. But I want to talk about this lighthouse stack going on right here, coming out from Red Rush Unity. Three tanks waiting on this. What are they waiting for? They're just waiting for an opportunity to push, you know. They're testing the waters a little bit. Maybe they can uh, find a way in. They know RT World's on his own. They know what Noah has in that position of the map. So they can be fairly confident. Obviously, the distraction coming from their main tanks on their hill and towards the middle um, is going to provide a lot of uh, a lot of respite if they do decide to push forwards. Anlik has got to be careful, though. He's been, he's, as I said before, he's been playing very questionably. It seems like he really wants to you know, prove to his team that he is a brilliant player, so he's kind of making unnecessary, uh, unnecessary moves and taking unnecessary damage. Yeah, we did see Nuclear try and sneak around down that 8 and 9 line. He got picked up in the end by White Morph in that 1390. So, really no luck yet for either side. This is very much a stalemate. Everyone knows what's on the line here. But at the end of the day, Noah can draw this and still walk away with the victory. But Red Rush needs to get in this. There we go. That's better play from this spot. Antelish backed away. You know, the other player coming in now, playing a little bit of getting that shot down towards Red Bull. They've got a hit onto Candy. Another one coming through. That is better work coming out from Red Rush. And we've seen the rotate coming through as well. They're going to be pushing around. They know that uh, Noah's kind of out of position and let Diodor in that fantastic position. I'm not sure why Diodor didn't push forwards enough. I think yeah. he, ex he expected too much pressure from Candy, but they've also got Rhino on the hill, so I'm not sure uh, why he didn't get there earlier because he's doing some fantastic work there. Candy taking a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage, or well, he didn't take any damage, took a shell from <laughs> Anna, the Antelich, so 
Um, he's going to have to retreat Dido on the reply as well, taking him down to about 40%, so he's got to be very careful. The pressure is now on to Noah. Unity have the hill, they have the middle area. All they need to do is kind of link all those elements together, really find the weakness, which at the moment is Candy and Red Bull. Honestly, if Unity just charge down through the middle, they take down Candy, they just leave Red Bull to get into the water, then they're okay, and they should be able to clean up the rest. RT and Lucy Kell are heading around towards the side. Anlich in a hot pursuit. Rhino's just there as kind of an overseer to make sure that no one's actually going to spot them and take them out. As we can see, LB in that T1, he's going to head around at the perfect time, perhaps, to spot that push. Yeah, and LB might just save the day here. You wonder what T1s do, you're going to find out. If he gets the spot on this, he could save a huge upset coming towards Noah. Noah, you know, they may not be in the most ideal position right now, but they're in a safe enough one that they'll have to depend on the oppo opposition making the move. Here comes that spot. LB, he's pretty much going to save the day. There's one spot, there's a second. He's going to die for it, but still, that's two tanks now found. That's an unbelievable move from LB. Perfect timing, perfect positioning, perfect instinctual play, but doesn't matter, Unity are going to charge on. Yeah, now his team needs to step up to the plate. He's done the hard work. He's put the work in. They now need to land these shots. They're playing for the time limit. Three minutes and 47 left. Here comes the fire. And while at the moment is the Red Rush Unity walking away with a huge advantage. Yes, they're down low, but R2, L, Chia, Papa, White Morph and Red Bull need to get into this battle. They're looking for the draw rather than the victory. They're playing too passive. They made the moves on the first map. They played so well. Now it's like a... And literally a light switch has gone off and they're like, okay, we're going to turtle down and just hope the time runs out. Exactly, you can't do that against Unity. Um, okay, they're one win up and all they have to do is draw, but Unity, definitely a good team at uh, countering that. They have had to do that. You know, this is a team that came second against Na'Vi twice in a row for season two and three. You know, and they're finally landing some damage onto Sh Shio Papa, if I can pronounce his name properly. Dido now heading off the hill. He knows Red Bull's low. RT World is kind of out of position. He's retreating On that MX 3090 and he has the perfect gun depression. Dido is going to be a real threat. Yeah, indeed. This guy has been doing serious work. 11 shots, 5 have hit, and all of them have been vitally important to this point. But White Wolf is getting a good couple of shells down, but it does not mean that Red Bull will survive this onslaught anytime soon. And still, no real move or reply coming in from Noah. They're just sitting there and taking it like a champ, and they need to do something. And at the moment, it might be r well now coming around. He's looking to challenge. He gets the first, but it's going to be horrible for him. He's literally got like five tanks staring him down right now. Surely he's going to fall. He's going to take Dido quite low. He's going to take the kill. This is unbelievable stuff. How are they still alive right now? Another missed shot from the MX-39. Definitely not helping Diodor in that situation at all. Bringing both teams pretty much even, apart from the extra tier one for Unity. They don't seem to be really categorizing on the uh, on their real advantage they had for at least two minutes. Yes. Uh, RT and Lusikel sitting there, not hitting the shells. Anlik is very lucky to get away from that one on, on by the skin of his teeth. RT starting to get on support. The only thing that Unity has now is the fact that most of Noah are on reload and Artie World get taken down. That's the favor back into the side of Unity. Yeah, but it's so close. Okay, Red Bull, he's got reload now. White Morph is pretty much safe. Shia Papa may be in trouble. Now, White Morph might be as well. He's got players left, right, and center. He's trying to avoid it, but you can see players are literally waiting. They're salivating at the idea of taking these guys down, but they're dodging the shells coming through. 1 minute 36. They're still alive here. There finally goes one more, but Shia Papa and Red Bull are still alive and kicking. Can they take them down in time? Um, I, I really doubt it, to be honest. Red Bull's on, on very low amount of HP. If, if he had wings, he might be able to fly off, but I just don't think he does. Lucikel's going to charge on, and undoubtedly, he's going to take him down or not. He's just going to hit the, the tracks of the uh, T32. That is the advantage. So Frag going to Lucikel, leaving only Shio Papa left. Shio Papa would have to do something truly unbelievable to pull this one off. He's taking a bit of a pound already. 96 HP, he goes down, and the Red Rush Unity get back into the game. But I can tell you right now, that was not a pretty sight from either side. I'm not sure if Noah thought, okay, we can just sit back and play this one out. Or, you know, I don't know what happened there. They literally did not make a move. And we have learned time and time again, sometimes, you know, fortune does favor the bold in this one and the brave and making that little, you know, advance. Look at Himmelsdorf. It proved to be true. You made that first move, you made that engagement, you, you kind of lead the pace. You get to do well. But in that game, what happened to them? I mean, I understand that from the south, it's definitely easier to defend because you have those buildings and you can kind of defend in the cap. But 
uh, you still have to be aggressive. You know, you can't allow a team to have the hill dominance for so long. Um, you could see how much uh, uh, just pure staying ability died or yeah. have. Okay, you know, he didn't do the most amount of damage in the world, but he really did put a thorn in the side of Noah. And then the, the charge through the middle by Unity uh, with the two MX-1390s really just put... It split, it split Noah in half. You had tanks on the left and tanks on the right, and they couldn't cohese, and, and it all just fell apart from that point onwards. But still, they had they had a few moments of brilliance, that push from the MX-1390 onto Diodor, taking him down was very good. And then from that point onwards, that, that MX-39 should have just pushed up the hill. Um, if he had shells, obviously make them onto the two MX-39s below, if not reload. And then when he's got those six shells left, just push in and do the damage he needs to do. And, you know, Unity took a fair amount of damage. For instance, RT World did almost 1.6k in that MX-39. Red Bull, almost 1,000. Shio Papa, almost 1,000. White Morph, 900. So it's not like they didn't do any damage at all and they didn't take Unity mm. low. You know, these might not sound them like the most amount of uh, the most amount of damage, but when you consider yep. the low HP pools of, you know, say the MX-1390, it, yeah. is a, it is a respectable amount. It certainly is, but I felt that it's such a stark comparison to that first map. We saw them take charge, they saw them surprise, and sometimes, you know, when, when you ignore the fear of a name you're facing off against, so when you face Na'Vi, when you face Virtus Pro, when you face these guys, or Fnatic, anyone who has this name, the instant fear of it can be just as effective as the actual team. And sometimes if you can get over that and play your game and almost disregard who you're facing at times, you can come out on top. And we saw them do on the first map. They ignored the fact that everyone knows these guys are insanely good one-on-one. -on -one. They ignored that. They went, okay, we'll play our game and we'll play it well. And they did that. They played it down to a T. They made it almost impossible for the opponents to come back. But now on the second map, they fell back into habits. And a lot of teams do it. Once they get the advantage, they get a little bit lackluster. And it's been a long day. Let's bear in mind, you know, the first teams got here, they warmed up, they played, they did their job and they went home. These guys have been waiting, they've been watching the games, learning the opponents, which is just as beneficial in the long run. But they're also maybe not as warmed up. They may not be as fresh. You know, they may be a little bit tired. These guys don't exactly live down the road, let's just say. You know, it's, it's a long flight to get here for these guys. Um, but hopefully, we can see something coming in on Cliff because... Obviously, we are going to that for a for our third map now, but I don't know what to expect from these guys. You know, Red Unity, you know, Red Rush Unity, they look phenomenal uh, in moments. There's glimpses of absolute brilliance, but it can fade just as quickly as it appears. And I think the kind of consistency question mark that appears around their performance on occasion is seeming to ring a little bit true here. Yeah, it's it's all about the consistency at the end of the day. Um, if you can't just if you can't pull out the consistent results, we've seen it from you know the likes of the European League where Spail, <laughs> they, they managed to destroy a lot of the uh, a lot of the Russian teams. They were the first team to beat Virtus Pro, the only team to beat Virtus Pro in season one, um, but couldn't you couldn't beat the, the teams further down the table, and that was yep. ultimately their downfall. You didn't make it to season three, and the team disbanded. So consistency is the name of the game in, in every discipline you know getting up training making sure you're doing everything perfect good practice is the best practice and you know making sure that you're you're eating properly you're going to the gym you're making sure you're healthy that's all very important for your state of mind and you know obviously this is as much about a me uh, me it's your a mental mentality game, yeah. exactly it, it's about tactics it's not just about twitch um you've got to have that real like rts oversight and also just the the real ability to hit the shots when you need we've seen that time and time to get time time and time today for instance Elian versus Pavel on that infamous match on Himmelsdorf uh, as we do start to make our way into our third and final map Cliff indeed so for this one it's going to be the decider essentially so in the south in the red it's going to be Noah in the north in the blue, it will be the Red Rush Unity tied at one to one. A phenomenal first map showing that Noah truly have bite to their bark. But in the second, it kind of fell to pieces. And the kind of you know, individual ability, that kind of performance based tactics came into front for the Red Rush Unity. But now, what are we looking at here? It looks fairly even. A pretty much a mirror match. Diodor, Rhino playing those two uh, T69. Triple MX3090, that's Arn, Analik, Arty, and Lucy Kell. And uh, for the side of Noah, we've got two T69s and three MX-3090s as well. T69 by Candy and Red Bull, MX-3090, RT World, Shio Papa and White Morph. And it does look like uh, Noah pushing up very aggressively up the hill. No team going for this one-two line push and up the hill. That's a bit, a little bit strange. 
Uh, mm. Also, that's coming out for Unity. Alec straight away heading over towards the left side. He had the best spawn, the AMX 3090. That's why he's got that job. RT for the middle place, Diodor and the other T69 just sitting up behind, making sure they provide that backup and also the gun depression. First couple of shells coming out, one responding. Noah sitting back. That's going to be a problem for them. It certainly will be. Noah do not have those positions they need. And Diodor, we don't have to give him two bites of the cherry. This guy did so much work for his team on the map just gone and candy once again is feeling the brunt of it down to 580 hp 83 he is gone from the map already and the red rush unity off to a brilliant start they have to push back now unity's on reload and uh, they can't be too aggressive despite their yep. perfect perfect start one tier eight tank down but look at the hp difference rhino's down to 582 and down to 873 well pretty much the rest of noah's on 100 percent hp but that is exactly what unity wanted to achieve they're not going to spread the damage across the whole team they want to get one Gun out of the game if they can. That's Candy, who was out of position and unable to be supported by the rest of his team. And you should call him Candy Crush because he was completely obliterated. And Shio Papa is going to try and, and get some spots out across. He's actually in a really good position. This is the position we've seen a lot of since the game has changed. That rock was added to, to, to the top of that hill, and, and it really is great. Oh, obviously, physics allowing that nuclear now heading up around, trying to get spots in the T1. And that's perfect play from Unity because. They have that tier 8 advantage, they don't need to sacrifice anymore. They can use the tier 1s, get the information, maybe do some damage with the Alec on the hill. Uh, and then if they really need to, they can use the rest of their tanks to push in and clean up. Yeah, and we've seen actually some great tier 1 play as well, and the positioning has been brilliant. The last map, you know, pretty much showing the push coming in from the Red Rush Unity was sensational. Sadly, they could do nothing about it by the time it was kind of found. But at the moment, you know, we, we can clearly see an advantage of numbers, but positioning-wise, I think you explained to me, Obviously, that maybe the Red Rush Unity have you know, a bit of an upper hand here. But how can Noah come back around this now? Where is their path to get their way back in this game, in this map? Well, certainly not what they're doing right now, which is pretty much spreading all their tanks around the entirety of the uh, second half of the mm -hmm. map. And what they have to do is rotate the tanks they've got on the upper side, rotate them back around, sending up the 1-2 line exactly where the pings are coming out at the moment. Yeah, the pings are pretty much describing exactly what I'm saying. Head up behind that rock, get the shots onto RT, died on Rhino, especially Rhino sitting on yeah. about 40% HP. Take him down. That brings that tier 8 advantage that Unity has at the moment out of the equation. And Lucy Gale does look like he's actually going to be blocking that hole yeah. a little bit in that MX 3090. But one MX 3090 versus the whole of Noah would not stand a chance. And that, that is one thing, you know, the MX 3090 doesn't do very much damage. The F3 only pumping out 240, a total of 1,440 if you count all six shells and if they land. Uh, but Unity look like they're on the first to move. They look like they're head around to where Lucikel is, probably drive down that hill or at least uh, send tanks around the hill, get the shots onto Shio Papa or even any other tank around. And Unity's doing it right because they have all their tanks together. They're pushing them forwards. This is classic tanks. Yeah, and it's what we expect from, you know, players of this caliber. They are truly phenomenal, but Let's see if they can make it count now. You know, Antelish has got a couple of shots coming across. Shio Papa does find one in return, so a good exchange so far. Ooh. And actually, Antelish going low, but <laughs> there we go. Goodbye, Antelish. That was a very short kind of uh, appearance from him in this one. And now Shio Papa may be in trouble. He's got about four players literally rolling into his position right now. Nuclear's going low. Rhino Hayes has got another shell. Brilliant focus fire coming out there. Picking on the lower target and just landing that shot nicely. Antelish just uh, overextending a little bit and getting cocky once again. You know, that guy hasn't been performing forming up to par. Shia Papa does receive on Lucigel, just blocking him off and making sure he can't attack. He's got three shells left, which is a fair amount of damage. That's thanks to some great focus fire for Noah, as you did say. RT World now on the rotate, as well as the rest of his team just getting better positions to deal with this. So now the tier 8 advantage is now negated for some reason. You know, Antlik, I don't know how he managed to die up that hill. Um, it's it, okay, it's open, but there's also a massive lighthouse right there, so you have to <laughs> retreat behind it. Uh, I guess, you know, once again, that Air Mix 3090's gun depression really does mean you have to commit to a situation, but you have plenty yes. of time to get around. And RT World only did receive one shell in total onto him compared to losing a tier 8 tank. That's definitely not worth it. White Morpho trying to find his way onto Diet or Cap and Rhino and making sure he's cutting off uh, Nuclear from pushing onto uh, Lutikel from pushing onto Shio Papa there. Um, but Unity straight on the rotate, getting RT onto the crossfire, making sure that. You know, Noah can't push on. They can't start working their way back into this game yeah. because at the moment you need to still have the advantage in terms of position, but only just, just because Noah is spread out Ooh. and are pushed back.
why Morph is now in trouble. He's been outflanked by Artie. Artie is not going to miss his shells, but he's got some coming back towards him. He's down to 6 for 8. He's forced to back away. Well played by the teammates there, but hasn't drawn enough attention away from the others to just kind of distinguish that crossfire that was really holding them in place. Uh, just about. He, he did his job then. He did the damage and he got out of there. He didn't overextend. He didn't overstay as welcome. He took, took, did two shots, took one. That's fair enough. He's going to be on rotate. That means Unity aren't going to be doing anything for, let's say, the next 25 mm -hmm. seconds and then they're going to be, make their next move. Obviously, they want all tanks to have full... Uh, full clips. So Rhino's okay, shot one. Dido shot one. Lucikel shot one. But that's okay. That's pretty much standard. Uh, but it doesn't look like uh, Noah are going to be uh, pushing some tanks around. Uh, LB's been spotted. Dido indeed going to be in a perfect position. And LB, he's not going to be able to deal with him. No, and Shia Papa is the one who's going to be worried. He's down to a minimum. Oh, he's been taken down. Removed from the map again. This is not looking too good this time. They, they've they been chipping back. They've been finding small replies. But just the out positioning coming out from the Red Rush Unity has been phenomenal. And Arty World is going on towards Arty. So it's the Arty combo going up against each other here. Red Bull is not too far around, you know, behind either. So they're trying to make a play from this. They're trying to do something. They're not just sitting back this time. It's not minds again. This is something very different here. Yeah, they've got to really retreat now and uh, White Morpho is pushing. And well, he's found a player. That's all he had to do. Rhino does join in, but he didn't really help his teammate out too much. Oh, he does find Artie then, but not going to land that. And Red Bull and Artie just backing away, toying with Rhino's uh, sense to peak. They know what these guys are like, and you can see Lusaku is desperate to get into these battles. He wants to get these fights done. He's not going to waste that shell. He's going to find LB in a different manner. And right now, who's got the advantage here? Well, just about uh, Unity taking down that tier one. Otherwise, it was pretty even. And you can see uh, Evan Force finding his way towards the cap of Unity. That's going to put pressure on RT World. It's going to be there as backup on the rotate. If he can take down Rhino on the way, that would be absolutely fantastic. But the kind of damage that uh, both these teams have to do is pretty similar. Apart from Dido, yeah. he has got a, ma a massive amount of HP left. He's pretty much 100%. But against those autoloaders, it doesn't make all big of a difference. Yeah, so let's find out now as uh, Rhino and Red Bull are just toying with each other around this corner as the cap does begin. Noah trying to get this one underway, force the hand of the Red Rush Unity. One player has snuck through the defense of Noah, who are trying to hold this one back. And Red Bull, once again, eyeing up the opponents who are waiting to now appear. Dido does come around the corner. Red Bull is in trouble. He is down, just too alive for Noah. This is do or die. The clock is so far away from being completed, as just RT World and White Morpho now stand. RT World should have really done a better job then. He was in charge of, of, of really getting rid of that crossfire. He was in a good position as well. He just didn't land those shells, and Lucikel, he was out of position because he should have been there to deal with anything that was going to be trying to crossfire. Caps are now in the cap. White Morpho will take him down, so that's at least alleviated for the side of Noah. But RT World on 131 HP, White Morpho on 279. What can they do? We're about to find out because I believe those shells are coming in thick and fast. Rhino making it hurt. White Morph is down to literally a sliver of health. 13 HP left towards him. His teammate has been decimated. And now this is just not looking too good. Dido is on the hunt. This man is still so dangerous. 881 HP. This is looking bad news for Noah after such a phenomenal start. Really drawing attention to who they are. But at the moment, it's White Morph, and that's pretty much it. Doing what he can. He's just about surviving, but I don't know how these shells aren't landing. He's still just dodging, but there we have it. He gets destroyed. And now one more map in the map. Well, in the bag, Rush Duty. These guys, they didn't do it pretty. It was not a good looking game, but they made it count. It was very methodical at the end there, but they don't look as potent as, let's say, Learning Train. Yeah, they don't look like they're quite as composed and they have that no, no. flair that Lemming Train has been having. So if, if, if it does come to it, I think, you know, Lemming Train will be able to take that game. But uh, the, the series will go to Unity 2-1. to one. No, only yes. picking up the first map. That was Himmeldorf. Some, uh, down to some fantastic play by Red Bull in the, in the IS3. Unity took mines. Pretty clear cut, I would say. Cliff once again going to Unity down to some just standard play on yep. that map. Just knowing how the map works. Having more of an idea of the coordination that's required there, and especially that was AMX 1390's play. The Analyke, only the one who's really, you know, st stuck out like a th sore thumb up mm. on top of that uh, lighthouse, you know. But at the end of the day, Unity really pulling out the win they needed. These are the kind of ones they need to pick up. Noah that's really did, good put, to see, did put up some, uh, some yeah. good 
you know, good resistance, but just not quite enough to take down the Giants. Yeah, and, and I do want to point out, you know, that there's, there's obviously a lot of respect between these teams, but it's brilliant to see, obviously, two teams that don't meet often, you know, after that first map, I think they had a bit of a rude awakening and they clearly understand their opponents. Not to be messed around, but it is good feelings all around between these guys. The Red Rush Unity look a little bit relieved more than anything. And Noah, I think that they can walk away from this if they do go out in the next couple of games and say, well, we showed something that a lot of teams didn't. We had something that was new, that was aggressive, that was dangerous, that shook one of the core teams to their core, essentially. It, it was... It, it was terrifying to see because if only they could have done that on the next couple of maps. They had minds. Maybe not the best start to it, but it was certainly a possibility to make something happen like that again. But they fell back and they went into this lackluster play and it just kind of tumbled down. It's just such a shame to see because at moments, they, do you remember when they, when they spotted that rush, when they spotted those three tanks coming around on that east side of the map? We're like, wow, this could go either way now. This could turn the game on its head. That is game-changing play there. But it just didn't come to effect. Yeah, it was a shame they didn't they didn't have the maybe the experience to to see that weakness and push it in. Yes. But you know, in terms of the overall bracket, that means you know Noah does go down to fight. You are dead. That's Asia versus Korea, and Unity is just mm. going to be waiting for the result of that. And uh, whoever wins that will be going out through uh, Group B until tomorrow's game. Obviously, two teams from today, obviously Lemming Train qualifying already yep. through Group A, the Group of Death, taking down Synergy and finally Simp. So massive congratulations to them once again. Um, but everything looks good in the Unity camp. Uh, they look unified for now, but we have to wait until they get their metal tested. I think, you know, if they get through to today, certainly tomorrow, um, I think we're going to see some more challenging games for them. And uh, maybe some of that cohesion we've been seeing in some of these maps is going to start to get a little bit rusty. Um, well, it'll be an interesting thing to see. It certainly will be. And you guys at home, we still want to hear from you, obviously. Uh, make sure you head over to thegrandfinals.com and give your votes for these teams coming up because this is not the last game for today. This is still just getting started. We're in Group B now. We had Group A. We had a great Group A. And I loved hearing from you guys on Twitter. Obviously, it's always brilliant hearing from you guys with that hashtag, the grand final simple as that it's it's easy you guys can just get involved that's all we're here for we like to hear from you guys so make sure you do that and make sure you tweet to myself and obviously my co-caster at they call me pansy for myself and at laughter wot and let us know your thoughts of the event so far is there anything more you want to see who do you think is going to be facing off against the opponents in tomorrow's game show who's going to qualify through everything can change everything can happen so guys we're going to go to a very short break and when we're back we'll have more incredible games coming up but actually before that do you know what we should check in with the expert desk because a lot went down in that game and i think i want to know what they think went wrong with the red rush on that first map on to NOA, they brought the Red Rush Unity to the brink in that rubber match. But looking at game one, gentlemen, what went right for NOA on Himmelsdorf was erratic. It was unorthodox type play. Break it down for me, gentlemen, because we were all trying to figure out what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really a chaotic game, really unorthodox. They had two tanks pushing from the hill, two tanks pushing from the eight line, and they left the one IS-3 to their base. He was standing there like one minute. Like he was rest. disconnected or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, is he dis disconnected or what? He's still there. But in the end, that was the when um, the Unity came to push against the Siho Papa. He was with 1500 in the D8 corner. They didn't know that there was still one ice tree coming from the 8 line because he was so delayed to come to f the fight. Yeah, it's like the, the shotgun quarterback kind of in football. You have him play way far back. Everyone goes way out into the field, and the quarterback can make, make that play because he has multiple options out there. And the, I've, I believe that Red Rush Unity underestimated NOA in this series. They went too Definitely. easy in that match, not thinking hard. They lost both tiers one, tier ones really early, and uh, Noah just pushed so far and hard. That's, ev that's even suicidal. <laughs> in normal <laughs> matches, but the, somehow it worked. They just underestimated them, and they left one tank on the cap to watch the top line, uh, the Unity, and he was late in fight. Yeah. He was late, and they just lost the fire fight there. After that, they didn't want to give them a chance, definitely. Well, and after that, on the next map, which was Mines, it came down to kind of a camp scenario for NOA, but it wasn't effective at all. Their positioning just didn't feel right. And then we had the Eastern push from the North, which broke up some of the defensive positions that they had with their tanks. It just started to fall apart for them, they, piece by piece. They just didn't choose the positions correct. Uh, they had a T-32 and Tier 1 below the hill. Tier 1 is uh, enough. 
just to spot if you want to abandon the hill. Then you need more tanks in the base and more tanks to cover each other. Like this, they literally gave opening to Unity to rotate the map. They're controlling the hill, they're controlling the island, they're controlling the village. They can just do whatever they want. Aha, this tank is badly positioned. Okay, we're going to rotate the map and shoot him from every side. For me, it felt like the uh, Noah won the first game, the Himmelsdorf. They were like, okay, we can just sit out the mines, but the mines is not the map to sit man. out. Yeah. No, Unity is not, it is not a team to underestimate. Yeah. It really isn't. Well, game three on Cliff, and you and I spotted this right away, the southern position that NOA had when they were approaching, the, you call it the horseshoe, we call it the donut over in NA. They were approaching that one side in the west, and they just hang back. They hang back towards the cliff edge. They don't move around the, the front to the cover. They don't move around to get cross shots coming in yeah. from towards the lighthouse side. They practically just sat back and was almost cannon fodder for some of those tanks coming the other way. I have no idea why they chose that area. Now, when they did fall back behind the cliff, that was good coverage, but it was a complete retreat, and you lose so much map control when you don't cover that area in the That center. is a literal example when you try to copy someone's tactic. That tactic is used in Russian clusters, but they were late on timings. So they sent both 13, two 1390s on the left side and they were positioned correctly, but the tanks on the right side were late. They were late. Maybe they're not using gasoline or something that's needed to get there faster. But they were late and they were caught on open. They were starting to lose health and uh, unity gain ground. Well, I am still impressed with that anyway was, was able to bring to this series. Red Rush, unity I don't think will underestimate them again if they do face them again in this tournament or in the future, but NOA is going to have to play tighter if they're going to be able to defeat any of these teams that are practically all-stars in the EU or Russian servers, or even America. But if this is what NOA is able to accomplish, I look forward to seeing Arete, who is the number one seeded team out of Korea and what they're able to bring to these different maps. Any other thoughts, gentlemen, on the last series before we take a quick break? That's it. Nothing more to say. All right. Well, we do look forward to seeing more of the matches that are happening. But before we take that quick break, we're going to check in to what Sean's been doing around the venue. Sean? The grand finals are living up to their name and living up to that trophy, the monolith. Now, what goes with awesomeness like that? That's, of course, a tasty snack. So as I promised, I'd get myself some popcorn. So I've done just that. And I'm hoping we're going to get some and then find somebody fun to share that popcorn with. So if we stick around, Everybody loves popcorn. It fits in perfectly with the kind of the, the grand scale of the grand finals. Thank you so much, my dear. I'll take these and I'll head over here. We'll find somebody to share the popcorn with. Stick around.